there everyone! I've been working on a video to talk about dashboards in Home Assistant. By default, Home Assistant provides an interface called Lovelace. And with Lovelace, you can easily create dashboards that contain cards. Each card can provide controls for the most common devices that you add to Home Assistant. Now these dashboards, they're adaptive, meaning that the cards, they reshuffle themselves based on the size and the screen on the device that you're currently viewing them from. So this way they always look great, no matter what size the screen is. But if you have a dedicated device for interacting with your dashboards, you may want a more permanent setup, meaning the controls stay exactly where you put them on the screen. Now the team at Home Assistant has recently made an exciting announcement. It's going to make working with dashboards so much easier. But I'm also going to show you how I have been setting up dashboards like this in my home. So if you're interested, stick around. Now I've compiled a ridiculous number of smart home devices around my house. And that demands a simple way to interact with them on a daily basis. And not just by me. Family members, guests, pretty much anyone that enters my home should be able to easily understand how to control the basic things such as music, entertainment, and even the lighting. Now I believe that an important part of smart home automation is to make sure your house is as normal as possible. Meaning light switches should be in the right place. They should actually turn on and off the lights. TVs should have remotes, ones that work just like you'd expect them to. And tablets, dashboards, voice assistants, automations, these things should be there only as complements to the normal expected controls. For tablet controls, I like to add dedicated devices, such as this 55 inch touchscreen in my office. Now, while brand new, these things might be expensive devices, but if you create alerts on resale markets like Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji, you may often find them at reasonable prices. I got this one behind me for a couple hundred bucks. It used to be a dedicated Zoom device, and the company who bought it was now selling it because they had moved to Microsoft Teams, so for them, it was useless. So their loss was my gain. Now I also like to keep an eye open for Microsoft Surface devices, especially the studios. These are the desktop version of the Microsoft branded computers. All the studios have great touchscreens and they're well built machines, but the desktop versions have a small base with a great big 27 inch touchscreen. Makes a great standalone device for dashboards, perfect for Home Assistant. Now I've been able to pick up two of these older devices for about 250 bucks. They're a little too old to be used as a daily device, but the ones I got are in perfect condition since unlike laptops that get beaten up over the years, they're most likely just sat in a desk. Now finally, if you can't find one of these, you can get a number of nice, inexpensive tablets and touchscreen devices on Amazon these days. I've left some of the links to some of my favorites in the description below. If you'd like to take a look, just know there are affiliate links and it helps out my channel every time you click on them. Now, although both work great, I prefer touchscreens paired with a Raspberry Pi or an Intel Nook. I find they're much more responsive than tablets and they're easier to work with. I find Android tablets seem to have memory leaks and often slow down needing rebooting. And often it's hard to find ways to mount the tablets compared to a touchscreen, which often have Versa mounting options. Now, before we get started with my dashboards, let's talk about a couple of add-ons that I add to Home Assistant to make this easier today. All of this can be easily installed using Hacks, which is the Home Assistant community store. Take a look at that first if you don't already have it set up. Once you have Hacks in, look for Browser Mod. This is a really cool add-on that creates a device in Home Assistant for every browser you install. It allows you to do many things, but most importantly for me, you can control each browser independently. So for example, if you have a dashboard on a dedicated screen and someone rings your doorbell, you can send a command to that screen to display a specific dashboard with video feed. Finally, and most importantly, look up Layout Card. This add-on allows us more flexibility to arrange the cards in a Lovelace dashboard. It's how I gain more control and I'm able to place cards into a grid within Lovelace, essentially putting them into the perfect spot for each scenario. Now that you have those installed, let's take a look at setting up a dashboard. Okay. So here is one of my default dashboards. This is one I use all the time. It's on the screen behind me. Now, what I wanna do is I'm going to um, go ahead and create a new dashboard or a new tab here. And let's call this demo dashboard. And we are going to choose for the view type, we're gonna pick panel. So essentially what this is gonna do is create 
one big panel card, nothing special in here. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add a card to this and we're gonna search for layout. Now this is the add-on that we added and we want custom layout card. Now in here, what we're gonna do is we're going to go down and we are going to choose grid, which is what's gonna make the magic for what we're trying to do today. And again, let's just do save. Now, you can jump over and you can look at the, the details and how all of this is set up. There's hundreds of different options you can use for this card. It's what makes it so powerful. But what I'm gonna do is, for sake of time in this video, I'm gonna jump back over to my original one and I am just going to grab the settings that I used and I will jump back over here. We're gonna go ahead and edit this dashboard again and I'm gonna copy these settings in. So now if you look at what I've copied in there, you can see essentially we've defined a grid. Each one of these grid template columns is the pixels between the different columns. So 240, 240, 240, 240, 240, and all the way to the end. And this is essentially just counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns, which we have represented here. If you count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the rows, 110, 256, 256, 256, 256 196. Now, these pixel densities are exactly what adds up to my monitor. And you can play around with these just by moving them around to test what's best. And then what we have is essentially the grid is defined here down below. So this corresponds to the top. We have five rows and eight columns, and each one is given an address. So for example, this one here is gonna be row three, six. What we've put in here are names, and you can go ahead and call these whatever you want. But for me, this is just an easy way to do it that helps me identify where I wanna put the cards. So let's go ahead and add a card. So I'm gonna come here and I'll choose just a simple switch and I'm gonna put globe light, which is a light that I know. And you can see if I go ahead and save that, it shows up right in the top corner of my dashboard. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit that card we just added. So we go back into the editor and we can see here is the card here, the globe light one. And we are gonna to add to this view layout and grid area row one and let's throw this into column five okay and what we're going to do is go ahead and save that and you'll see instantly what happens is the globe light card is now moved over in our grid if i go back in again and just for fun let's throw this all the way down to the bottom and we'll put it in row five you'll see that it has jumped down on the screen. So this is what gives us the absolute placement of our cards now within that dashboard. So let's look at a couple of interesting things. Let's quickly go ahead and add a, another card. And we'll do a light again, and we'll do another globe light that I have in the house, globe, uh, desk globe. There we go. And we're gonna go back into the show code editor, and you can see that it's added. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this and we're gonna give it a position. And instead, let's put this one in row four dash four. We'll go see what that's done. So you can see what's happened here is we've got one in the one row and the other in the other row. Now you'll notice that this second one is bigger. And there's a simple reason for that. If you come back in here, we can see that that second row is actually has, the second from the bottom is 256 pixels, whereas the bottom in is 196. So let's take that one here and let's actually just make it 50 pixels. Jump back out and you can see how small that button got, right? So it's using the 50 pixels that we've designated for that bottom row of the grid. Now let's jump back in and let's try one more thing. Let's actually go ahead and just add another 50 pixel row. And to make that simple, we're just gonna copy what we have here and we're going to rename that to row six all the way across the board. So we now end up with six all the way across. And we're almost there. Six. Okay, and then let's move this one here. Um, row five, five, 
let's move that to row six, five now. And we can see that there's now a space. So essentially we've got a row in between there, which that card is not going. But what if you wanted to have some mixed? So let's say we take desk globe and let's move it to desk globe is in six. It's in four, four. Let's move it into row, um, row five, four. So they should be right beside each other, but in different rows. Okay, but what if we want desk globe to actually take both rows? Well, there's a simple trick for that. You can jump back into the code editor and what we want to do is the naming that we've given to the rows, we're actually going to combine them. So if that one is in row five, four, which is this one right here, five, four, we're actually just going to make them the same. So we're going to make both rows called five, four, the same name. And what that's going to do is allow that button to stretch and actually occupy two different rows within our grid. And I mean, if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and five, four, five, four, you could take it right back into the fourth row and you can see what you're doing, right? Now, this also works. Let's go ahead and move that back. Uh, it's going to be four, five and six. Let's go back. So we've now put it back into the same. Let's say we have it in row five, four, but we actually wanted to do two columns. So we could do the same trick. We could make this five, four and five, four the same. So what this is going to do is stretch it across two columns and you can see what it's done. And you can even combine the two as you'd probably expect across two rows. So if we actually went five, four and again five four we should now take up two rows and two columns for that one button and there we go now as i mentioned in the beginning it was announced that some of this functionality is being added directly to home assistant if you upgrade now you should be able to try it i'm hopeful that we're going to see some of the requirements for editing this in code removed and hopefully easy drag and drop between the rows and columns added I'm looking forward to this as I believe this is going to make creating cool dashboards so much easier. If you're interested in learning more about Home Assistant, dashboards and more, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up so that everyone else knows. And well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.